Hey, sup? This is Kazi Corey, your first Rainbow Dash cosplayer in Malaysia, and you're tuning in to DMBS Show. It's as awesome as a sonic rainbow. Hello and welcome to the DMBS Show, episode number 33. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Oh, hi, Norman. How are you, Daniel? I'm not well, still sick from last week. Wow, still? You didn't take any rest or anything? I didn't have time to rest. Yeah. I'm busy. Well, I guess rest is for the week. And I'm pretty weak. <laughs> because you didn't rest. Oh boy. <laughs> In the next story. <laughs> okay. And our guest for this week is Kazui Kori. Hey! <laughs> How are you, Kori? Not too bad, not too bad. Excited, nervous. Only one go. <laughs> okay. How has your day been? It's been very, very tiring. Getting muscle arm, skytrack, flying clocks, climbing from tree to tree. I feel like a monkey for a day. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> okay, awesome, cool. So before we start the show, we have to ask you the four important questions. So, number one is, who is your favorite pony? Wow, that's kind of hard. I've got a couple. The pony that I lead mostly is most likely Rainbow Dash. Okay. Why Rainbow Dash? It's just pure awesome. <laughs> okay, I, I can accept that. I can accept that. <clears throat> she's just too awesome and she's kind of like me in a way, slightly. You know, tomboyish kind of side, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool, cool. So... We have officially achieved our first combo. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, both guests have the same best pony. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Last week, we wow. had Chef Sandy. He loved Rainbow Dash as well. Cool, cool. Rainbow Dash is conquering the world with her awesomeness. <laughs> true, yep. true. I still call her the Barney Stinson of MLP. Barney Stinson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. No idea why, but never mind. Um, the second question is: What is your favorite episode? Wow, favorite episode. Okay. Strangely enough, it has to be an episode where Rainbow Dash doesn't appear much in it. It has to be that episode, um, it was the episode where uh, Princess Luna first made her appearance in Ponyville. Oh, the Nightmare Night episode, season 2, episode yes. 4. Yes, I love that episode. <laughs> okay, um, why? Why do you like the episode? It's interesting how she's trying to blend in with every, with every pony there. And they still have that, that image, the uh, the feeling from what happened to them back then, and the, the dreaded visions, and the kids running around and... St- <laughs> Pinkie Pie. <Screaming. laughs> it's Pinkie Pie. It's chicken. Just, yes. Trolling. Pinkie Pie is just trolling to the max. <laughs> oh, definitely. Okay, <laughs> yes. Like moon run! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I just find it very interesting, and I like the way she actually speaks. <laughs> the, her language. Her language is very is... Old English, if I remember right. Shakespearean English, I think. Don't really remember. Old English, I like. Yes. I really, really like that language. It's... <laughs> Did you like the volume? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit too the loud for my taste. The best. <laughs> oh my goodness. So anyway, um, the third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Oh, Wow. <laughs> Now, this is going to make me sound really old. Okay. <laughs> Started out with the first generation of the My Little Ponies. And I think I've got a tape of that. My Little Ponies for the generation. I think it was Escape from... It was my, from my Katrina. Katrina. <laughs> I, I know. Yes, that is one. Escape from Katrina. And there was two. Because there's two two movies in one tape. That is the second one. The first one was escaping from, uh, I, I think the first, we can see the first generation Rainbow Dash was Firefly. Um, Firefly, yeah. And she had to go to the human world and and fetch that girl. <laughs> I forgot her name. Melody, if I remember right. Melody, okay. And they first met with, and then they first got the Rainbow of Light. And I still remember that I think what's he, what is he? I think it's um, it's a small little gnome or something troll what? that sings. Oh, that one! It's a very depressing song about himself. Nobody likes him. <laughs> but I like that song. 
I, um, I think you remember it. How it I think how it went. Um, somewhere there's a tiny little rainbow. <laughs> you save it for a rainy day. <laughs> wow. Is it underneath the cover or in? Uh, is it underneath? I uh, don't know. No. Is it in the cover or underneath the rug? Ah, uh, bug or something. <laughs> Wow, the only G1 song I could remember is Shoo me doop 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 me doop. <laughs> that is legendary. <laughs> Not the theme song, which is so like, you know. No, the theme song is okay. The theme song is okay. It's G1, so. I like the I like the build up, you know, like the instrumental beginning. <laughs> I mean, it's G1, so you have to forgive 80 soundtracks, so. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah, I know, but some people might not. You know, the uh, new kids. The old people with their G4s and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, like, then when it's they come to the true. credits, they don't really um, put it on the screen, like, starring Sandy Duncan. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, that <laughs> spoils the song. song. Seriously, that spoils the song. <laughs> it's true, it's true. My sister, she's uh, she's 78 years gap with me. Mm-hmm. And she just started uh, watching MMP, the, the reason why with me, when I started it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I told her, why don't you look back at the uh, at the generation one? So she had to go through YouTube and stuff, and she was like, "Wow, back then it was so different. It was definitely a girl show all the way." <laughs> <laughs> I think G two wasn't that much of a girl show, but um, G one and three were. Not really. G one was pandering. G two was growing up with the audience, and G three was marketing for girls. Girl. Yes, indeed. It definitely is. I was... Actually, to be frank, I did not see the, the G3 f- episode fully, but I was struggling with my sister. <laughs> Both of us in the same with the laptop. We were like, oh my. I'm trying to cope with this. I'm trying to cope with this. <laughs> I love ponies. I love ponies. I don't care. <laughs> did you try G3.5? Oh, God, no. No, no, no. Why? G3.7, a.k.a. newborn cuties. Ah. Uh, uh. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. But I am tempted. I am tempted. Save that for a rainy day. Oh, it hurts. (laughs) Make it rain heavier. (laughs) Because of my little ponies, I've got crazy with horses in real life. Oh, really now? I'm in love with horses. If you could just give me a... If you just give me one purebred Arabian or Andalusian horse, I could just go right down in the country and just live with a horse. That's it. I'm happy with that. (laughs) Wow, that's cool. So anyway, um, the last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? <laughs> okay, my parents definitely know because of My Little Ponies. Uh, if, uh, like I told you before, because of them, I fall in love with horses. Oh. And yeah, and they just know how much I'm crazy with them. Since then, I've just started collecting horses and My Little Pony stuff. Even... Okay, to be frank, even right now, some, but whenever I, I see the, you know, some we, we they sell that right recently in Jasco and stuff, the um figures Jasco yeah the figures, the figures. yeah ah, okay. I'm not sure about Jasco but I do know they sell it at Toys R Us, um, Metro I and so. other I places. Saw, I saw it in Jasco and my sister bought it and she slowly started collecting. Those are the ones that um I'm not I'm sure which generation they are, but. Um, they are definitely not from the, the recent generation. I think they were the previous one with random names that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the new one also has random names we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but they had to have a show with it. And uh, prior to that, no, and Apple... And, okay, there was one pony I know she had was Applejack. And the color scheme is not what the reason Applejack is. I think the color scheme was green and red. Yeah, I Who's think a something. Silly pony? Who's a silly pony? <laughs> That's G one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See, you know another song from G one. But not that popular. <laughs> not too sure about that, but she has tons of that. Seriously, I'm no pretty sure she stored up somewhere. <laughs> I just have to open it up like again. Okay. What about your friends? My friends. <laughs> I can only share this with bronies, definitely not with my regular friends. Oh, okay. What so... about friends who are into cosplay as well? Bronies and cosplayers, and unless you consider their cosplay friends are bronies as well, if they follow the show, then definitely they're like, oh, oh well, if they do like the show, then they are called bronies as well, right? So true, true. I would consider bronies as everybody, anyone who loves My Little Pony. 
Actually, that's quite true because uh, when we were in line, the three of us, Tasha, me and Jimmy, we were all three in costume and we were at Comic Fiesta last year. A lot of people recognized us. Did you... Okay, I don't know whether you remember this, but you were you guys were walking outside with a huge Fluttershy and... <laughs> that was on day and, two. Yeah, it was on day two. There was... Um, we were outside the hall and... Uh, uh, I don't know whether you rec- whether you recognize, but I was there as Tao Kaka from Blast Blue, and there's another cosplay beside me, my friend. She was Sasuke. Um, I think the first costume, Sasuke. Uh, next to me was another friend of mine, but she was very very little costume. Uh, when you guys passed, she was shouting, Fluttershy! <laughs> I remember I was, people doing that, yes. <laughs> we, you were outside of the hall. Yeah, I know. We were looking around like, wait, wait, wait. Mikhail's is so big. <laughs> true, true. And that's where, that's where I was like talking to her. Hey, how come nobody does the humor version? It would be so epic. I, I, I think was it up. surprised. It was like counter, right? I know, but it's just that nobody really know the reason one as much as back then. I mean, the... the yeah, whole, true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless you're a really true brony, then you can really like look it up on every single generation. Or every single pony. Like, they're Digimon or something. You want to recognize every single pony. So. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's, that was, this was interesting. When we were in queue, Tasha is in full pink in the Pinkie Pie color scheme, which you can't go wrong with. It's blue, yellow, pink. And I'm in surprise, full costume, top-down white, even with a tail, three purple balloons. And Jimmy is there with nothing but a purple scarf and a, just a little dirty cutie mark on his shirt. And he was the one who was recognized first. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we were, he was re- right in between us and he was like, are you, re-? they were like, are you Rarity? And I, they were like, he's like, yeah, I was playing Rarity. And then you're like, we just all shake hands, all hi, 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 hi. He was like, I'm surprised. Oh! <laughs> well, I'm surprised too. No one tells people don't really recognize you. <laughs> Okay, to be frank, because we've never really seen surprise cosplay, and you know, because it's a uh, Gijin Katak version, they, there's no official art to it because it's up to you how do you want. It's up to you how best you can portray the character in your costume, in your Gijin Ka costume. So I, I'm so sorry, but I couldn't really recognize you as surprise on that day. I just I... saw. You know, I just saw you in a full suit and it's orange, I mean, sorry, yellow uh, wig, afro wig, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Carry, ca- uh, carry the balloons and there was a balloon um, uh, cutie mark and I was like, ooh, okay, oh my god, they're bronies. I was like, ooh. <laughs> that's all I can, that's all I was like, oh, wow, we have bronies here in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, moving on to housekeeping. On October 14, the Asian Brony Herd will have an awesome meet-up with Black Griffin. And I will go into Singapore to meet him. Hope for something awesome from him. Yep. I'm pretty sure you get it. <laughs> I hope so. I know, come to Malaysia, you know. Tombstone's going to Phuket, Black Griffin's going to Singapore. When is someone coming here? Well, I might go to KL soon. Do, do I count? You're already in Malaysia. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> And also, today we would like to wish Ethan Powell of Alicorn Radio a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ethan Powell. But if you're listening to this, it may be a few days late because I'm going to Singapore to meet up with Black Griffin and editing will be kind of slow. But happy birthday anyways. <laughs> Indeed. Happy birthday. And moving on to the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Funko might be making pony collectibles. It looks like we might be getting more pony merchandise. And this time it's from Funko. The first item that we might get from them is a vinyl Rainbow Dash figure. Things are not 100% confirmed yet, but a seller on eBay has gotten his hand on a prototype version of the item. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what do you think of the figure? It looks pretty accurate. It's awesome. Kind of looks good. I wish I could have it. <laughs> yeah, I want one. <laughs> But, I mean, okay, I'll be honest, I've never heard of Funko. Funko is a company that does um, vinyl figures. They did mostly stuff like, st- sorry, uh, stuff from Disney, Marvel, and whatnot. It's kind of the cute stuff. Look look at the link in the show notes. There's something about it. You mean like chibi kind of figures and stuff? Something like that. Oh, wow, because this is like 
Okay, Rainbow Dash is naturally cute, so they can't make her cuter than that. Anyway, Daniel, you want to debunk my news? And yes, Norman, the vinyls are out and being sold at Hot Topic. Check out the link in the show notes. It looks like the vinyl pony figures are real. They're official now and they're sold at Hot Topic. The figures that are being sold are Rainbow Dash and Derpy Hooves. Unfortunately, it looks like some things have sold a little fast and Derpy Hooves is already off the shelves. And restock and sold out again. Yep, every pony loves Derpy. Just look out for the links in the show notes to check out the pictures if you didn't get a chance to grab a derpy for yourself. So, guys, um, it's real. It's being sold. Anybody want to buy one? I want like, Seriously? They just look so awesome, especially Rainbow Dash. Well, she's one of my idols. Hmm. Derpy hooves definitely is a must. Fan base. I think the figure costs about $14.50, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Derpy is going to shoot through the roof, just like the Comic-Con Derpy. Those are being sold at $200 right now. Last time I saw one was at 300 Wow, the price is skyrocketing. Indeed, because... You can expect the Derpy to go up now. Well, <laughs> the <laughs> thing with uh, Hot Topic stores, even though if they sold out, they restock it quite fast. So if you do try and look at it again, maybe there's... I mean, maybe there's in, they're in stock. You know what? I'm going to check it right now. I want to see if there's any stock. Moment of truth, people. Moment of truth. Good luck. Oh, dang. Sold out. Oh, man. Okay. But so it's on like pre-order, you know, and especially like how Bronyville says it, the particular figures that fall off a truck in China and end up on Taobao, those fly off the shelves as well. <laughs> I've talked to one of our previous guests, Draco Ronan, about it. He says, when they get onto Taobao, they are bought in bulk by people who just grab it they just they don't even think they just grab the ponies right off Taobao and in the next news Pinkie Pie strikes again so earlier this year a hacker by the name of Pinkie Pie hacked Google Chrome it was done in conjunction with Google's Ponium hacker contest now at the second Ponium Ponium is it Ponium that's how it's pronounced alright so in the second Ponium hacker contest Pinkie Pie has struck again is there nothing that our beloved Pinkie Pie can break into? Links can be found in the show notes. Fun fact, the second round of Ponium was held in Kuala Lumpur. I did not know that. Amazing. My friend told me about it and I was like, man, I wish I could be there. And I'm like, Pinkie Pie was there? <laughs> Why did I say no? She knew that you would give him away, so he made it not interesting <laughs> so that you didn't go. <laughs> she got a picky sense, you know. Yeah. And breaking the fourth wall and Google is second nature to her. She can break the fourth wall and your firewall, so watch <laughs> out. <laughs> True indeed. And for our final news topic of this week, in Germany, things aren't going the same way they used to. Discord has crashed the honeymoon because some German bronies are a little confused as to why Nickelodeon, the company that's going to be broadcasting MLP, decided to broadcast the season 2 finale first, which was the wedding. And then only the remaining 24 episodes, meaning the season 2 started with the wedding. So what could this mean? Did Viacom derp again? But as it turns out, that reporter and reviewer Weatherhoof from Derpy Hoof News has inquired and they were just following orders from Hasbro. So does this mean that Hasbro wants Discord to crash the wedding in Germany? What do you guys think? Links are in the show notes. Hmm, I'm not sure. It could be that they want to sell the toys. You know, the... Wedding, um, the sorry, um, the, the cantaloupe wedding. Yeah, the cantaloupe wedding toys. Uh, of shining armor and Princess Candace. Do you think they does the? Do you think they uh they would sell out first, then rather than meeting with Discord first? There's no Discord toys, but it does. Oh wait, fit, no. <laughs> it does fit well with the toys because the Chris sorry um, the wedding sets are out, so. They need- pretty much, to a non-brony, a pink unicorn is probably the most girly thing in the world. So what happened is that now that they've made Celestia white, they still have to keep a pink unicorn on the shelf. Uh, keep up traditions, you say? <laughs> cadence, yep, and their target audience. True indeed. I'm going to try out something new today, guys. So I'm going to read off MLP Facts. You can find MLP Facts at MLP Facts on Twitter. So did you know 
In World War II, the British used an assault tank known as the Tortoise Heavy Assault Tank. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. The first thing that came through my mind was Rainbow Dash Awesome Pet Tank. <laughs> the MLP now has a World War II reference. <laughs> Indeed. Did you know in Hurricane Fluttershy, Spitfire makes her first appearance since The Best Night Ever? For that long? Wow. I did not notice, actually. Wait, wasn't Secret of My Excess like... Oh, wait. You mean as herself and not part of the Wonderbolts? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, now you know. Oh. And did you also know, in the new Season 2 intro, Derpy Hoof can be seen riding a muffin-shaped train car? Oh my god, seriously. Have to look that back. Okay, I know she's on the train, but I didn't notice the shape of the car. Well, <laughs> there's something for you to look. And I've already been like, oh my god, Derpy! And then like, the car is a muffin? <laughs> Shape as a muffin. And did you know Cadence was originally a unicorn? I think I, I saw that before. I think it was in the um in the first official Yes, if I'm not in the first official art or the talk, if I'm not wrong. Actually here's a fun fact, because for bronies for us we can disassociate the four species Alicorn, Unicorn, Pegasi and Earth Pony very well. But unfortunately for some out there they don't know the difference between unicorn and pegasi. That's why when sometimes I'm talking to my lecturers in school about ponies because I have nothing better to talk about, mm-hmm. I just go to them and say that, you know, she's a unicorn and I, no, she doesn't have wings. And she, they're like, don't unicorns have wings and a horn and they are all magical ish and they can do all sorts of things? And I'm like, no, not in this show. <laughs> they don't have wings. Only the princess has wings. So is she a unicorn? No, she's an alicorn. I'll get to that later, but never mind. Well, fun fact. <laughs> in. Classic D&D, they call a winged unicorn a pegacorn. Okay. That sounds weird. <laughs> I know. But that's classic D&D. Classic D&D. Or what normal people would think in the um, in storybooks. They don't really yeah. have long, flowy tails. They just have a horn. And a tail is kind of like a donkey's tail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not yeah. long, flowy, pastel-coloured. Especially not pastel color. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's everything has to be pure white. And without a sun on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So anyway, if you like those facts, you can find those facts at MLP Facts on Twitter. So let's move into the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Kazui Kori, a local Malaysian cosplayer. <laughs> <laughs> so hey there, Kori. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. All good, all good. Hot tight. Okay, so <laughs> before we start, um, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know you? Okay, sure. Um, Alright, first of all, as you all may know, my name is Kazui Kori, or you can just call me Kori, whichever way is fine. And I've been a cosplayer in Malaysia for nearly six to seven years, I believe. And I, what Malaysian bronies would call one of the first um, My Little Ponies uh, Gijinka cosplayer, uh, cosplayers out there in Malaysia. Apparently, I've heard there's only two, so I'm not too sure about the other one. But uh, I guess due to what uh, to what the uh, my my cos my character, the one I picked for Gijinka, which you could call that as a human form. Uh, would be the most popular, so that's why people would tend. To, if you see me, uh, rainbow hair, probably see rainbow dash, and that's me. <laughs> awesome. And funny enough, um, the second one is our co-host Tashirina. She dresses up as Pinkie Pie. <laughs> oh, that. Oh my. I didn't and see that. And she's done derpy hose as well. Yeah, but in Malaysia, she dresses up as Pinkie Pie, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. She did it once in Malaysia as well. Cool. Okay. When was that? I missed her. <laughs> Comic Fiesta last year, when uh, Jimmy went as Rarity, I went as Surprise, and she went as Pinkie Pie. I saw you <laughs> <laughs> with the big, huge Fluttershy and Rainbow, and, and no, sorry, not Rainbows, and Yellow Balloons. <laughs> it was purple. <laughs> oh, and yellow it? hair. <laughs> I, oh, yes, I saw your yellow hair. <laughs> so, Corey, we have some questions for you, so I hope you don't mind answering them. Not a problem. Okay, so, like you said, you started costing seven years ago, right? Yep, either seven or six years ago. I know I've been, the first cosplay event I've been was um, Comic Fiesta, I think 2007 if I'm not wrong, but the venue is definitely in Times Square. 
Okay, so what made you start cosplaying? Hmm, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. I can't remember much. How did I start it out? Well, but thinking back now, I think it started out with um, back then the uh, I think Gempa, the our regular. I mean, our local um, comic. local comic. Yeah, yeah, our local comic magazine. There, um, they were showcasing uh, cosplays in Japan. I was fascinated to see, wow, okay, these are called cosplay, okay, and they're it, and they're a they're dressed up exactly what the character or what anime is. So I think that's where it all started out with, and then I started following because the gumpa started showing tips on how to make costumes and props and and I, and then I, I think it started out from there. And of course, the internet back then was slowly growing with this kind of thing, so. It's all it started as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, what kind of character do you like to cosplay as? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. What type of cos- characters I like to cosplay? Okay. Definitely the characters I like. Sometimes I've been given... Uh, sometimes I've been asked to join a group for a character perhaps I may not know before. But because um, some people like to cosplay characters that fits fits who they are or fits their body proportion or their skin color or their face or something like that just to say because there are a few different cosplays or cosplayers you want a different shape some are just casual they're just um they don't put much of effort they just wear the costume and you know have fun and be the character holy if you want that way if not then you can just be yourself and then make sure you act like the character in photos wow. other than that there are people who aim to be the perfect cosplay. So that means skin color, height, proportion, makeup, hair, everything has to be perfect. If you want to be completely perfect, then you act like the character the whole day. Back in track, I could say I I will cosplay the characters that I love. At the same time, I want that character, if I could, uh, to be uh, to be as perfect, well, nearly as perfect. For example, like Tomb Raider. Yeah, I have one costume, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. She's she's dark skin slightly because I am uh I am also dark, in a way. Uh, we all know how Malaysian skins are, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so dark, that is uh naturally tan in a way. So, uh yeah, I've just picked the char- just pick characters that suits uh that fits my description. Or if you have read, uh no, if you have. Uh, it's also read. If you have read and watched this manga called Aria, uh, there's one character. Her name is Athena Glory. Uh, she's dark skin like me, perfect. <laughs> and she she is amazing. I find her very uh, very silly at times because she is kind of clumsy. You could call her derpy as well, by the way, because some <laughs> because she can really hit things without knowing. <laughs> She can bump into things without, she, without uh, seeing a thing in front. I can and... bump into things without seeing things in front of me. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> exactly. I have a vision defect as well. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. <clears throat> so anyway, um, you were saying that when you were pulled into a group, they ask you to cosplay as a character you don't know, right? Yes. So how do you get to know that character? How What's the process of getting to know a character? Watch all know. the anime! <laughs> One way is that. <laughs> well, just recently, my friend just asked me, for Comic Fest of, uh, Day 1, they want me to cosplay Anastasia. She's from Brave 10. She's blonde and she's fair skin. But, you know, cosplay, we don't really opt much. I mean, we don't really care about skin care. Unless, like I said earlier, unless you want to opt for perfect. But, heh, who cares? I want to... Uh, cosplay is for fun anyways. So, anywho, I do not know about her before I've never heard about her and you know they just asked be- <laughs> and this is gonna sound silly I asked him why you know, why you want me and he was like to be frank it's because of your bust <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay I was like, excuse me Taka <laughs> he was like don't be mad I'm just asking I didn't ask you I didn't like force you into it it's up to you and I was like Okay, fine. Let me look into this character first. So, yeah, I, I downloaded the whole anime and watched it, and I kind of find Anastasia cool. And I was like, hmm, okay, I can carry her. Yeah, she's cool. I like her. Why not? Okay, okay. Cool, cool. 
So, when you're making a costume, how long does it take you to finish it? To be frank, I don't generally make my own costume because of time and real life issues. Uh, really, time is not the essence for me. I mean, uh, um, <laughs> time is not working well with me. So, um, most of the time, my costumes will be sent to the uh, to my personal tailor if it, uh, easily fit it for me. But other than that, if I ever have a chance, well, usually for simple costumes. If it's complicated costume, I'll be sending them to the tailors. But if it's simple costume, like my reason one, uh, most reason one is the uh, Rainbow Dash uh, Gigi Cup cos- uh, costume. Now, those are made out of my normal clothes. Um, and uh, yes, apparently I, I, I've just made up uh, the whole costume with whatever I've got. And oh. it's, <laughs> I have to tell you, this is the most cheapest costume I ever did. I've ever invested in <laughs> okay, <laughs> because cool. it's my stuff basically and I just had to do some modification like wings by tail ears go- glove and um, the goggles that's it if you want to calculate everything let's see I could say about um, say about uh, just a hundred plus just like that it's very cheap though oh cool cool I built the surprise costume I used for less than 100. It was also pretty cheap. But I had to go all the way to Penang to get part of the stuff. Wow. <laughs> well, if you count that with fare, um, travel fares, it's about 100 plus. <laughs> well, actually, because I went up with um, one of um, uh, Malaysian, another Malaysian brownie, Rainy, who cosplayed as DJ Pwn3 on day one of uh, Comic Fiesta. Yeah, I went up with her. Uh, I mean, I went to meet her in Penang. She's from Penang. Now she's from Johor, but she's studying in Penang. Oh, okay. Uh, how do you say? And we decided, come, let's just go out and shop for whatever we could use for our cosplay. Uh, I like those shopping cosplays. You know, we just get together and we like, okay, what cosplay are you cosplay? We're cosplaying this and then I need to find this and then this. So everyone had to keep an eye, had to keep their eyes open and we just go to random shops and find those stuff. That is the reason why my top doesn't match my bottom. They're different shades of white. <laughs> Oh. And when, I, when the photos came out, that's when I learned that there are multiple shades of white. <laughs> oh, multiple <laughs> shades of white. Because of my skin color. Fifty shades of white, you say? Oh my. I wouldn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Not fifty, but okay, maybe I'm unlucky that there's only two and I happen to run across them. <laughs> okay. Daniel, you have any questions for her? Yes. Okay, being a... Okay, I wouldn't call myself a cosplayer because I've only done it once. But I would like to ask, um, if you can recall back your first feeling when you, when you did cosplay, the first time you did it, how did you feel about yourself? Oh, wow. It was illiberating. <laughs> did you feel like you're, getting, you're taking on someone totally new? Or did you feel something different? Hmm. First of all, back then, I, I did not know about the uh, perfect cosplay or the casual cosplay kind of thing. Uh, but in a way, I was uh, it, unconsciously, I was opting for the perfect cosplay. I picked the character at the same skin color. And uh, to be frank, she's, she's very, very sexy. <laughs> if you notice I don't know if you guys do but if you notice most of my costumes are slightly revealing especially the tummy part I have this little motto in my head saying things like when you have it flaunt it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have this thing in my head as long as you have it you flaunt it so yeah well, you're in the right country to do it because other countries will freeze you to death <laughs> seriously Oh my goodness. But yes, that was what I was hoping for. Back then, with my first costume, it wasn't really the the default costume of that character. She's a side character. Her name is Iria Natsumi from Air Gear. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, um, what she original costume was uh, bright yellow pants with a uh, pattern of arrows pointing down from the hip, from the hip down right down to the uh, uh, to the bottom line of the pants, and uh, she wore a red bikini and a sk- <laughs> and a short brown spiky hair and a very long white ben- uh, bandana top, sort of like that. But because you know back then we don't see any yellow 
jeans than him anywhere, right, back then. Uh, about five, Unless six you dye years your ago. own jeans yellow. Exactly. Back then, there was no such thing as yellow. There was always blue, pale blue or black or white, right? That's yeah. the general general cause color. So I have to make do with a casual version of her. Basically, I just wore uh, a, a hipster jeans. Uh, and I seriously wore a bikini, but a blue one. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about that later. <laughs> and I, to go into the hall, I wore a half crop jacket that still shows off my tummy and wore, uh, wore uh, what was that? rollerblades because Ooh. of course in the whole the world does not does not I mean air tracks does not exist in the world unless I make my own air tracks which is two wheels it's just two wheels on the shoe which is run which is run by a powerful motor uh, that can go up to ooh, very high this goes very, very, very fast, seriously. Almost as fast as a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, it would be epic if you actually got all the way from your house to the convention center like that? Whoa, I would be flipping and doing parkour. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it, seriously. If you watch Air Gear, it's a really epic anime or a manga. I prefer manga because they're more detailed. Um, yeah, seriously, it's epic, right? If you could... Yeah, it's like, you know, those adrenaline rush kind of movies. Whoa. A show, sorry, a show. <laughs> it's cute, it's cool. So, on that first day, I feel like, yes, I am cosplaying, well, casual version. But hey, I'm cosplaying as Iriana Sumi. I don't care if people would not notice. I'm just being her. And trying my best to portray her in photos because I'm the type of person that I'll act as myself. If I'm not in, uh, you know, in uh, course, in photos, people are not, when people are not asking me for photos, I'll just act as myself. But in photos, I will be in full character. Unless, of course, I were to wear a costume that covers my face. Now, if I were to have that kind of costume in the future, I would definitely be full character to hold it because nobody knows me. Over Deadpool or someone like that. <laughs> yes, I know that fellow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was liberating, and um, even though it did not go as fully planned as the original character default costume, still had still had fun being her and trying my best to portray because acting is one of my passion. So. Hmm. Acting as the character is best. Uh-oh. Yep. Okay, cool. And um, just one more is that, do you have any advice for anyone who may be listening, especially from Malaysia, who would be interested in doing their own pony cosplay in terms of constructing the costume? Because as far as I'm concerned, there's not many uh, pony costumes that are ready-made. I don't think there's any even, except for the first suit. So what advice do you have for constructing a pony cosplay? Hmm, okay. Well, my advice is pretty simple. Uh, try your best in portraying the character's personality through the outfit that you're wearing. It doesn't have to be um, elaborate. It doesn't have to be um, too complicated unless you want it to be that way because it's up to you. How do you... It's up how you view the character as you portray in the show. So, for example, if you can see uh, recently I did the Rainbow Dash costume. Mm-hmm. She is, as we all know, she's awesome, basically. That's besides the point, but hey, <laughs> besides the obsceneness. Second thing is what the most obvious portrait that she does is she's very tomboyish, correct? Mm-hmm. So, what does tomboyish strike you? Tomboyish girl strikes you. She has to be sporty. So, you have to basically link up the general links to make it more, uh, to make it more recognizable, basically. So, uh, um, mm, it's like, Okay, Rainbow Dash, she's tomboy, so in a way, she's sporty type. Twilight Sparkle, she's studious, she's very studious, and she's reading books. So basically, you have to maybe carry a book around, and you have to look smart, smart sophisticated. Um, rarity, rarity, what do you get rarity? She's obviously a diva, a fashion, <laughs> fashion designer, and... Mm, if I could say, if, if you could, this character needs a uh, a lot of, if you could, elaborate or anything that looks elegant. So, but anything it is, it's up to you. Uh, just show, just 
show your best at how you see the character and portray it as best as you could in the costume, whether it's elaborate or simple. Um, it's just uh, to show your love of the character and how well you portray it through the costume. That's all. All right. So do you have any advice for people who will be trying to take on Pinkie Pie because I'm interested in doing that? <laughs> Pinkie Pie, simple. She's full of surprises. That's one thing, and um, wacky, fun. Uh, why don't you try making that mask that she? <laughs> oh, okay. That, that special shape. Definitely, that's a recognize. That's an epic recognizable thing. Or one more epic item. <laughs> I <laughs> actually have that. Things would do. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You were saying? No, you you first. Okay. Uh, one more thing, one more advice. If you want to cosplay, uh, want to cosplay, want to uh, um, a uh, MLP character, you have to also, if you could, take a prop, a prop that is definitely recognizable. This is what we always. This is uh, this is an advice. I, I think I, I I could say we take it from the vocaloids, uh, vocaloid characters, whereby Hasuni Miku. Her item, her particularly her her item that everybody knows is a leak. <laughs> everybody in the world knows a freaking leak. So if you ever see a leak <laughs> everywhere in the world, it's her, right? Yeah. <laughs> true, true. Exactly. So just take it to that point. So, like I said, uh, Rainbow Dash. Well, Rainbow Dash doesn't have much except for maybe if you have a, if you have a, <laughs> if you have tank, you can carry <laughs> tank around. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. If you have rarity, then um, a big two diamond. <laughs> <laughs> or a big rock. <laughs> or a big rock, definitely. What else? Try and sparkle a book, basically. <laughs> uh, Fluttershy. I don't know. Little... Angel little Bunny? Butterflies. Angel. Yes, Angel. Yeah, and good. I think Pinkie Pie would be awesome. She would have two things. One is that special shade of hers. <laughs> two, the cannon. Oh, God. I wonder how yeah, you're going to bring that along. Cannon as well, to construct a paper mache cannon. You should do it. You should do it. It's a pink, and make sure you stuff something in it. <laughs> I'm surprised that you didn't say, like, you know, she should carry balloons around. Well, that's a general kind of thing, but any character could be portrayed as a bull- with balloon. So maybe, you know, suddenly, maybe suddenly uh, Twilight Sparkle, she just wants to carry balloons. Okay, fine. Just make sure it's her color theme. Uh, pink, purple, pink, purple. There. Finish. Every character can carry a balloon. Uh, make sure it's color theme, so... I guess that's the point for the I tie a hundred to my waist and make me look like, you know, like <laughs> a particular scene when she's running around. <laughs> exactly. So you can, you can definitely. And uh, if you need help or reference in costumes, then you should go look up on internet. I'm pretty sure there are people who does um, fan-based drawings. Make sure you do ask for their permission, though, uh, if you ever find a source. Ask them if you if you if you're really interested in one intricate design of that character, uh, of the character, whatever cosplay, if it's fan base or MLP or anything game, just if you really like the costume, if you could find a source, ask the owner, uh, if you could ha- if you could cosplay it, and you know basically get the if not if not then it could be a drama uh, dramas. Copyright, this and that, and you know, you're not supposed yeah. to do this, and this and that, so we don't want that. And yeah, basically, for you, Daniel, you just need to bring up awesome prop <laughs> that portrays uh, Pinkie Pie, which I definitely big, seriously suggest those classes. <laughs> and I'm and gonna work on the canon. Canon, definitely. I'm really gonna work on the canon. You should In go fact, Actually, I already, uh, since I do balloon art myself, I have actually pulled off the party hat. <laughs> The wow. umbrella hat, I'm sorry, the umbrella hat. Oh, the umbrella hat. <laughs> yeah, I pulled off the umbrella I would umbrella. love to see you in it, seriously. I think the cannon would be an excellent addition. Other than that, make sure it's pretty wacky color and the, the costume has to be super wacky and fun. Okay, good advice. Yep. Any more questions, Daniel? Nope, I'm good. And thank you again, Kauri, for answering our questions. Not a problem. Anytime. <laughs> I hope you're not too annoying. <laughs> Definitely not. Such a pleasure. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is email time. So, um, Daniel, how's email time? Uh, as usual, it's... Wait, 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 th- we've got mail! What? Really? We got mail? We have mail, yes, we have mail, and it's not from Twitter. Oh my god, that's so cool! Okay, um, let me read it, let me read it. <clears throat> drum roll, drum roll, moment of truth. <laughs> okay, howdy. 
I just listened to you guys for the first time. I really enjoyed it. My buddy at Alpha underscore Brony and I also do a MLP podcast. We just released episode 4 last night. We are also fans of Bronyville and we wanted to extend an invitation to be a guest or guest on our show at some point. I shall now begin working my way through your back episodes and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Pony on 5iron, bronytime.com, at 5iron brony on Twitter. Cool! Well, Brony Time, I listened to your podcast and, well, I find it very entertaining. And thanks for the email. I've written a review on iTunes. I hope you guys do well. And thank you very much for breaking our email hiatus. It's been like an empty inbox for so many months. Indeed. And, well, we will be honored if you invite us as a guest. Well, you're already inviting us. We'll just need to reply to you soon. Anyway, we'll plan something out. We'll plan something out. Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, my one shout out is to Calvin Funtime. He'll be escorting me around Singapore tomorrow we, to meet Black Griffin. So cheers to you, Calvin. Thank you for bringing me around. Well, you won't hear this episode till it's finished editing, but hey. So Daniel, you have any shout outs to give? Oh no, not this week. Although I wish I had someone to shout out to. Okay, well, Curry, thank you for being our guest. That's my shout out to you. Not a problem. Let's do this again next time. Okay, sure. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS Show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and I'm at Norma Sanzo. I'm at S T P I N K I E. That spells Saint Pinky. Just call him Sergeant, he'll like it. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so, Corey, you have a Twitter account? <laughs> I'm building that up as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so... Welcome to the Twitterverse. <laughs> Indeed, welcome to the Twitterverse. So, you, what's your handle? It would be my name, I believe. Kazui Kori. At Kazui Kori? Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. cool. We'll add it in the show notes and we'll confirm it later. <laughs> <laughs> and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And like our Facebook page. Link will be provided in the show notes. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I'm your nation Rainbow Dash, Kazui Kori. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. A flash of color and she's gone.
I want to try something new. Um, I'm going to read off MLP facts. You can find MLP facts at MLP facts at Twitter. Sorry, how does their, their Twitter handle is MLP facts? Just so you know. okay. And I'm going to read off MLP facts, and their Twitter handle is at MLP. There. Actually, our tongue twister episode. Okay. Three, three, two, one. The MLP. <laughs> Three, two, one. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to read off MLP facts. You can find it. Tw- <laughs> I can. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Uh, three, two.